Okay, so someone asked me to make a tutorial demonstrating how to alter pricing based on when a reservation is intended for versus the date that it's being made on. So say you want to reserve some vacation spot for May. You're going to pay a certain price. Well, if you want that, uh, if you want to go to that same destination, say in July, specifically July 4th, you're going to pay a premium. So it doesn't matter really when you're making the reservation on. So you're, you're making the reservation on, you know, say you're doing it in February, but rather when the reservation is for. So basically when a price is displayed for the customer or client, however you want to call it, it should be based on date of intended use. That's actually quite easy. Now, Whenever you're talking about a POS, a point of sale system, you really go down a rabbit hole. So I'm not going to go through all the details of making this a web interface or any of that. I'm just, it, it was a very narrow focus question, how to calculate price. So I'm just going to focus on that. Uh, you could do an entire series on a POS database. So I'm just focusing on that one bit of functionality. And again, yes, uh, I'm going to display this in a form. I realize that the customer would actually be looking at a web interface. It's just a matter of taking these values and putting it into a web interface. So let's create a bare minimum table. And we'll call this so destinations. And we'll call this avail for available. I try using multi-word descriptions whenever possible, just in case a word is a protected word or a reserved word. By, make, by combining it with other words, it's no longer reserved. Also, you don't really want to use a, a, um, a field that isn't descriptive enough. Like You don't ever, ever want to use the word date because any kind of record you could think of probably has multiple dates the date the record was created, the target date for completion, the date it was updated. So you really don't ever want to just use date, for example. You always want it to be descriptive. So we'll call this destinations avail. Click on OK. So that's the name of the table. Get rid of the primary key. Just don't need it, at least not for this example. We'll use a short text. And we'll call this Again, destinations, and we'll call it locations. Didn't want to repeat available, so destinations, location, or destination locations, there we go. So now what we're going to do is this is actually going to be a source table. And that is this table is going to feed into a, another table. So what we're going to do is we are going to save this. And now we're just going to mainly add a few values. So Hawaii. Bermuda, Raccoon City, that's, that's enough really, and we're going to go back to destinations available, and we're going to put in a second field, this one is going to be base underscore price. And this is going to be a, could be currency, can be number. Let's do currency. Save that. Go back. And this will be, base price will say 1,000. Base price 2,000. 
And this one, for some reason, is on a discount. We've been hearing people haven't been feeling well in Raccoon City. Okay, so that's our destinations and our base price. Now you're going to need a second table for the actual record of the purchase because someone is making a reservation, so you need to track those. Okay. But let's see if we can make do with just this because, like I said, I'm trying to focus on just that functionality and not go down the rabbit hole of a, a POS system. So let's go to create. Let's go to blank form. Let's go to design. Make the tickable changes I like to make. So we'll make sure it's highlighted up here. It's selected. Uh, go to design. Go to property sheet. And we're going to get rid of border size thin, record selector no, navigation, record selector no, and navigation buttons no. In other words, you're really trying to constrain how they can navigate, that you want them to use your custom buttons. Now, what we're going to do is also while we're up here, we're going to choose the data source. For the record source, we only have one table, destinations available. Now let's add a drop down box, also known as a combo box. This is the combo box. Now, because we selected a data source, you have three choices. So find a record on my form based on the value I selected. There's only two values. Yeah, we'll still go with that. Widen this a little bit because even if you make this really wide, it will be constrained by the width you, def you define here. So let's save this and we'll call this, we'll just call it POS FRM. So point of sale. So we'll click on that. And sure enough, there's our choices. We'll come back to design view. We're just going to shrink this up a little bit. Not that it really matters, but make it look a little neater. So we have our destination. Now what we want to have is we want to have a value we want the corresponding value to be chosen but we also want to have a date be um, uh, selected as well and have that date in combination with the selection here come up with a final price so let's go ahead and add a second form uh, not a form excuse me a, sep a, a second combo so it doesn't have to be as big now, in this case, we don't want it to find a record. Um, we'll type them in manually. You technically probably should take it from a table, but in the case of months, months really shouldn't change. They've been stable for quite some time. So this is one case where you could just type them in. Span the column so it fits, and then you can just do like January, February. Whoops. Let's try that again without hitting enter. March. So January, February, March. And then we'll just skip ahead to July. That way you can like see the difference in pricing. Remember value for later use. Again, we'll save it. So there's our months. Excuse me, there's our locations, there's our months. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and change this to month without the caps. And we'll change this the name of the act that's just a label. We're gonna change the name of the object itself. So name, it's combo two. Let's call this 
months combo. Again, you, you don't want to just use the word month or months, so you're using months with the word combo attached, appended to it. Okay. Now we want the price to show up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a text box. So this is going to be where we make the calculation. So this basically gets us to what we want. And this is where the magic occurs. So what is the value going to be? This is going to be, let's see, event. A lot of websites will have a button that says update. Um, refresh that kind of thing technically you probably could just code this to requery I'm thinking of trying to make this as easy as possible on you guys I might just have if you click on this then it calculates the value let's do that for now the reason why it matters is because you have to attach the functionality to an event so that's why I'm saying you have to kind of choose what event you want it to be attached to so we'll say you click on it and it'll recalculate you typically wouldn't click on a field like that, but again, just trying to show you the calculation. So code builder. So what do we want? So we want this value to be equal to, so me dot text for, because this is right here that it's text for, let's name the object, is equal to me dot forgetting the name so this so that's the month we've selected but what I need is the price from this table so I'm just going to double click on this and it's called base price so what we're going to do is we're going to take that base price we're going to put it in the form but we're not going to make it be visible to the user. So design, add existing field, base price, we'll delete the label, and then for base price we go to property sheet and we do, and I just have to remember where visible is, Not right there, visible. So in format, third one down is visible now. So they're not going to be able to utilize it. But we are going to use it for the calculation. All right, so back to the script. Sorry about that. Okay, so when you type in me, you're referring to the form that this script is attached to, or at least the uh, form that the object this script is attached to. So me.text4 is going to be equal to me. Dot and now you're going to see why we had to put that there. Me dot, oops, let's get the, see now base price is there. So me dot base price plus, and this won't be the final calculation, I just wanted to show you how this can be done, plus 200. Save this, minimize it. Save this. Okay, so we said that Hawaii was a thousand. So we're going to click on text and see it says 1200. So this is the basic, the basic of what you want. Okay, uh, they said they wanted to have a calculated field. Now it didn't look at month, but it did change the base price. So let's go back to the script now. What you're going to do is you're going to do a bunch of if statements. Now, you could probably come up with something more concise than this, but again, I'm just showing you the, the, the root concept, and that's how development works. You come up with the functionality, and then you go back and you uh, reiterate. You make it more concise. So, again, we're going to look at the me's. If me dot... And 
is it called? And I forgot the name already. So let's go to design. And this is called months combo. Yep, I chose that and I couldn't even remember that. So if me dot, well, let's get back to where it's suggesting. Months combo. So if me dot months combo equals July, then we want that to happen. Sorry about that. I always forget when you have to use a then because I also program in C sharp for Unity, and in Unity, they, uh, excuse me, in C sharp at least in Unity, they dropped the then. So now, sorry, I'm trying to copy this. So one of the other choices was January. And here, me.text4 will just be the base price if you choose January. If you choose July, then it adds the $200 premium. And then that will actually be the request that was made of me, is how to make the calculation based on date. Actually, let's make sure I save that. Sometimes it's a little, it's a little finicky. Uh, sometimes I've seen changes not be saved. So both save the script and save the object and then run it. So let's try this again. We're going to do Hawaii. We're going to choose January and then we're going to click here. And we get an error message because again, I program in different languages and I forget when you have to put in the end if. Actually, I wonder if it won't save it because it's not in design view. It's not save. Oh, I know why. It's still in debug mode. Sorry. This command will stop debug. Okay, so that's why it didn't want to show all the versions. So go back to design, we'll save, go back to form. So Hawaii, January, see it dropped it to a thousand. Hawaii, July, pumped it up to 1200. Bermuda, January, 2000. July, 2200. In good old Raccoon City, 400. Go up to January, 200. And that's it. So that's the request. Uh, it, it's then a matter of taking this, embedding it into a uh, web interface. And then, of course, the typical, like I said, the POS uh, rabbit hole where you're charging a credit card, you're capturing this value. So this is the value you'd be charging them. So not the base value, but this calculated value. And this is what would be forward facing and you do everything in your power for them to never ever see that base value. It's not a matter of deceit, it's just a starting point based on demand. So that's about it. If anyone has any questions, just let me know. But that is the request that was made is um, having destinations, have the price be different based on the target. Now, obviously, this is kind of broad. I chose a month when, in fact, you'd probably would narrow it down to a day as well. But it'd be just as easy. You choose a month and then choose a day. You'd add a new, col a new uh, combo box here for day. And then when you go into the code, it would just be adding more lines. So rather than just checking month, you check the combo box for a day or date. All right, so that should do it. If you have any questions, just let me know.